All right, so what's the derivative of these two? What's y prime? Huh? 8x plus 3? What's y prime? 8x plus 3. Well, they're the same derivatives. Are those the same functions? No. But they have the same what? Which means graphically they have the same slope at every point. So what I'm assuming is that these two functions are basically the same function, only one is a shift of the other, right? Okay, which is why it's a little bit more difficult to go from a function or from a derivative to a function. Because that's where we're headed towards. We've been finding derivatives, and you can find the derivative of anything. I mean, I mean, it may be the ugliest thing in the world, but you can find the derivative. It may take some time, but whatever. But there are a limited amount of things that you can actually take the antiderivative of. Um, and so we'll start learning how to do that today. Okay? So basically, this constant, this 5 versus this negative 200 pi, doesn't really matter. That is what differentiates these two functions. So any two functions with the same slope are going to differentiate only by that constant c. Okay, they're going to have the same slope at every point. It's just that constant c that's different. So what I'd like to do is find the function whose derivative is this. So write down f prime of x equals that. F prime of x equals 9x squared minus 2x plus 3. You know what I didn't even check? I didn't even check if the sound works on this because if I don't try my computer regularly, the sound doesn't work. <laughs> so I could be having a video for no reason. Yeah, really. <laughs> and then all of a sudden my like pen waves around. <laughs> like, <"It's> like, <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> So here's how the sound works, or not. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so um, I gotta find f of x. Yeah. So what would give me a derivative of nine x squared? Okay. Well, that's not all I asked, but whatever. Um, so Ben is telling me three x cubed, and so is someone else. Corey, 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 you probably told it to me first. Um, so, guys, where did, get where did they get 3x cubed? Right. You know, no beating people. Um, you know that when you take a derivative, you have to subtract one from the power, right? You bring the power to the front, you subtract one. So let's go ahead and go backwards and add one. So I know it's going to be x cubed. And then I think, okay, when I bring 3 down, what would I multiply it by to get 9? 3. So 3x cubed. So this is a power of 1, right? So when I add 1, my new power is what? So when I bring a 2 down, what would I have to multiply by to get negative 2? A negative 1, or just negative. And then that's x to the 0, so what is it now? So 3x. The antiderivative of 3 is just 3x. And then what? I have to add some constant c, because this is only a family of functions for which this uh, derivative occurs. Um, I, I can't get specific unless they give me more information. So you have to remember plus c. Okay? We good? All right. Let's do this one. Find the function whose derivative is f prime equals 1 over x minus 3. Write it down. f prime equals 1 over x minus 3. Okay, brainstorm for a second. Think about what would give you a derivative of 1 over x minus 3. What gives me derivatives that have denominators? I mean, so third period they were like, quotient rule, and I was like, I don't want to have to think about undoing quotient rules, so how about I would get x minus 3? Huh? A negative power? If you think about x minus 3 to the negative 1, that is what we're looking at right now, right? If I add 1 to that power, what do I get? Okay, so that's the one case it doesn't work. Otherwise, yes, I. Going to negative power would be the right, right route to go. Hmm. If only we'd taken a derivative such that, uh, of a function where the derivative is 1 over something. 
I mean, like, I want to say it's natural log, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's natural log, guys. <laughs> this is so exciting. Hey, um, hey, uh, do y'all know what that function looks like? I'm, I'm disappointed again. Okay, guys, one over, guys, that is a vertical asymptote where? I'm going to go with positive three. <laughs> and it looks like that, yeah? Okay. Now, when I think about the natural log function, if I told you, hey, the function is natural log of x, what's its derivative, what would you say? 1 over x. But there's a stipulation. Natural log is only defined on this side, so my derivative is only defined on that side. But this is the derivative, and the derivative is defined everywhere. Yeah? Yeah? Which is why my answer actually is going to be f of x equals ln of the absolute value of x minus 3. So that the original function is defined on both sides of the asymptote. Okay? So did y'all write that down? Natural log of the absolute value. Okay, um, but what, about, what am I forgetting? Plus c. Don't forget c. And there you go. Now, guys, on your homework, it might say comma x is greater than 3, in which case you don't have to worry about the absolute value, in which, and in fact, you shouldn't put them because it's only talking about this side, okay? So then you would not use the absolute value. Okay, uh, let's do this one. Find the function whose derivative is sine and whose graph passes through point zero 0,2. Find the function whose derivative is sine, so f prime of x equals sine, and that passes through the point zero 0,2. This is my x, this is my y. All right, now this gives me more information, which means I can actually be more specific on my answer. Uh, what function has a derivative of sine? Negative cosine. So negative cosine of x plus c. Good. And if you're unsure of your answer, take the derivative. What's the derivative of negative cosine? Positive sine. Good. Yeah? What am I going to do with that coordinate point? I know that when x equals 0, f of 0 equals 2. Yeah? So then I can solve for the constant. What is uh, cosine of 0? Remember, cosine unit circle. Cosine of 0 is 1. Yeah? So I'm left with a neg 2 equals a negative 1 plus c. c equals? I'm going to go with 3. So final answer? Negative cosine plus 3. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now let's do this one. <coughs> okay, write down f prime of x equals 1 over x squared, and then write down the point 2, 1. Alright, what you gonna do? Huh? Yeah, go backwards. What are you, how are you gonna, what are you gonna rewrite this? x to the negative 2? So I'm going to rewrite this as x to the negative 2 so I can think of it like that. And then I'm going to undo the power rule, right? So what do I do? Add 1 to the power. What is that new power? So i got to think about, when I would take the derivative of this function, whatever this is, if I bring negative 1 to the front, i got to get what? i got to get positive 1. So negative 1 times what gives you positive 1? Negative 1. So I'm thinking that the original function is negative 1 over x to the first. If I take the derivative of that, do I get this? If I bring the negative 1 to the front, I get 1x to the negative 2. Is that right? What do I have to remember to tack on, though? Plus c. So f of x equals this, and then i got to remember that I'm going through the point 2, 1. So f of x equals a negative 1 over x plus c. What do I do? Plug them in. All right, what is y? What is f of x? 1 
negative 1 over 2 plus C. So what's C? It's better if you whisper it. It's 3 over 2. Yeah? 1 plus I. Final answer? F of X equals negative 1 over X plus 3 over 2. And there you go. And like I said, this is, I mean, going, undoing the derivative is called a what? I've said it before, undoing a derivative is called an antiderivative, and that's what we're doing. Yay, we're learning, we're going to learn a lot more about that, and then you'll learn even more about that once you leave me and you go to Cal 2, because everyone's going to go to Cal 2, right? Okay, sounds good. Find the velocity and position equations for an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared and an initial velocity of 1 meters per second. Okay, so here's what I've got. I've got my acceleration function. It's 9.8. Acceleration has not got a variable because acceleration due to gravity is constant. Okay? Um, find the velocity equation and the position equation. And the only thing that they're telling me is that the initial velocity, so the velocity at time zero, is one meter per second. So this is all the information they've given me. And they want me to find the velocity and the position function. Well, tell me about the relationship between acceleration and velocity. Acceleration is the of, uh, so if I want to find velocity, I've got to take the antiderivative. What is the antiderivative of 9.8? Okay, right, so if I'm going to take the antiderivative, well, the derivative of a constant times a variable is just the constant, so the antiderivative of a constant is the constant times the variable, 9.8t plus c. Okay, now I cannot take the antiderivative from here. You cannot take the antiderivative when you still have a c in there. Can I actually solve for c right here? Yeah, they gave me enough, they gave me that velocity at 0 is 1. So no velocity equals one at time zero. Do you have to show this step if you know c is zero or c is one? No. You know you're plugging in zero, c equals one, whatever. But if you want to, go ahead. Nine point eight t plus one. So that's velocity. Now what do I want to do? Find position. So what's the antiderivative of nine point eight t? Well, I know it's got to be t what? squared, so 2 times what gives me 9.8? 4.9 squared plus, what's the antiderivative of 1? Or t in this case, and then plus c. Yeah? Okay, um, I cannot do anything else with it because they didn't give me an, another, they didn't give me an initial position or a position uh, term, so I can't find the specific position function, so I'm done. Yeah? All right. So, let's spend the rest of the period doing that homework. Now guys, on question 40, it's going to ask you to graph and then it's going to have A, B, C, and D. It's going to have some stipulations that you got to meet and then you got to graph. So that means you're going to have four graphs on that, okay? So, I mean, you'll understand it when you see it, but 40, you are going to have to graph four graphs. Okay.